I'm doing a video to my past self. I really wish I had a video like this when I was pregnant. We're gonna go over tools, timing, and tips. The biggest thing that I didn't know before delivering my baby was how much your chest leaks involuntarily. And there are two ways to handle this. One is if you're leaking a lot, you get milk catchers. So I have these Haka ladybugs in two different sizes. Uh, they work for me this in even bigger size. Uh, I use both of these sets almost every day. Alternatively, if you're not flowing too much, you get these pads. Now, I have realized that I leak the most when I am actively feeding. So when I'm feeding from one side, the other side is gonna leak and that is when I use the ladybugs. And then if I am out and about, I don't leak as much. Couple months in, so that is when I use the pads. Most important thing is to get these in the same color. They come in pairs. Do not get the different colored ones. You will be matching. Just get them all in the same color. Now, let's say you catch the smell. Okay, what do you do with it? That is when... I put it in a bottle. Now, this bottle has one ounce, at max two ounce. At most, we give our baby a bottle two or three times a week to get him used to the nipple but he never drinks more than one ounce. So I only fill this one or two ounces. And when I have more, I fill a second bottle. That second bottle, as it collects, I either store it in the freezer, not that I know what to do with that stash, or if there's not enough, then I'll pour, pour another ounce into here. Now the problem is, if you gave your baby your let down, they're not actively suckling. So you need to compensate and get that milk supply to come back. So that is when I use the Hakka and I hand express. And now because the letdown that he drinks is only about an ounce, two at max, I hand express using this into, and here, the difference between the ladybugs and the haka is that this has measurements. So I will sit and I'll hand express up to an ounce or an ounce and a half just to be safe. Um, and then I will again pour them into the ladybugs, same system, whatever is left over goes into the freezer. From the freezer, you can then use that milk for bath time. I honestly don't know any other purpose to use it for. Uh, some people use their freezer supply. However, my mom raised a really good point, which was like, have you ever frozen milk and then tried to drink it? You think it's gonna be the same? So if I am expressing milk, uh, leaking milk anyway, I will give him the freshest milk, the one that goes straight from ladybug into bottle because I will not do the whole unfreezing, checking the date, thinking if the composition has changed. So the freezer stash I do think is a waste, but at the same time, my baby is getting the freshest milk. I'm leaking anyway, and I do have a stash in case I need it for any purpose. Okay, <laughs> in terms of timing. So babies are awake for like one to three hours, depending on what kind of baby they are. My baby tends to be awake for, on the longer side, I would say two to three hours. So I end up feeding him as soon as he wakes up, he's always hungry, and then usually one other feed sometime in between. And then he actually ends up cluster feeding sometimes in the evenings or when he's hitting a growth spurt. So what that will look like is you put him down, he wakes up right away and he's, you know, looking for, he's, he has that rooting reflex and he's crying, he might, he might cry, he might say some things, he's calling out to you. So then I'll feed him, I'll put him back down, wait five minutes, he wakes up again, we might do this maybe five times in a cluster feeding session, but then once he's really full, he goes down and then he sleeps for the rest of the night. For nighttime feeds, the pediatrician said to me that I can try rocking my baby back to sleep because he is the right weight to sleep through the night. However, when my baby gets up, I don't want to be in the business of soothing a hungry baby back to sleep. So I feed him, I change his diaper once a night, and then he goes down really easily. For me, this is like 15 minutes of work rather than soothing a baby and then wondering, is, is he hungry? He used to wake up two or three times in the night occasionally sporadically he might still do that but generally he wakes up once so for example if he goes to bed at nine he might get up at three at three o'clock i will change his diaper because he does pee a lot through the night and then i will also feed him back to bed and then he'll get up again at 6 30. sometimes he does at 12 and 3. Uh, in that case i would only change his diaper once and i would only, but i would feed him both times and then put him back to bed even if the diaper says 12 hours of protection, it gets so heavy. I just don't feel comfortable yet personally, but everyone has 
different babies. Other general tips, I you of course you can pump. I never really learned how to use a pump, um, but to me expressing one ounce does not take a lot of time at all. And I don't have a lot of sensitivity or I never ended up using silverettes or nipple shields or creams. And I just feel more comfortable hand expressing. The pediatrician highly recommended giving the bottle to the baby at least a couple times a week to get him used to the nipple so that we don't have problems when I go back to work. Uh, obviously because I don't want to end my breastfeeding journey prematurely and have that option in case I need to. But I think the greatest tip is don't lose your sanity. Uh, at some point, let me just speak it, let me just speak from my point of view. There was a time where my milk supply hadn't caught up and he had hit a growth spurt. He was upset, he was cluster feeding and he wasn't getting enough milk. As soon as I was able to give him extra milk from the bottle, he went he slept better, he slept longer. And so having that having that as an option is really important, especially when you see, okay, I need to catch up or my milk supply needs to catch up. Always stay flexible and that has worked for us. Other than that, uh, I guess I learned only recent babies enjoy eye contact when breastfeeding so I'm trying to not scroll, scroll on my phone as much and also I just go and flip on a podcast or audiobook and I stare into his beautiful eyes while I listen to something in the background. So that's also a helpful tip. I have not returned to work yet and maybe it'll change when that happens. Alright, thank you!